Next up, surfer of categories, East Coast Surfing Hall of Fame is proud to induct New York's Eric Penny. <laughs> Eric is from a standout surfer from Hampton Bays, New York. And it was really difficult for me to dig up much information about him, but thankfully we have his sister Dee Dee here to fill in the blanks. But before I let her tell all the story about him, amazing human being, just a quick story. Eric moved to Miami for his freshman year in college and decided he'd make a trip up the Florida coast to surf at Sebastian Inlet. He heard that was the place to be. Guess what? He was arrested for surfing inside a posted restricted area within 200 feet of the inlet. He was fined $25 plus a dollar court cost, went back to Miami and decided it's time to move. He went to San Diego and the rest will leave to, to Dee Dee. But before she talks, we want you to know that right before he died, Derek wrote a letter to Surfer Magazine before he passed, stating emphatically that he purposefully searched out the biggest and gnarliest waves that he could find to show that East Coast surfers shouldn't be taken lightly. He was very proud throughout his entire career to be from the East Coast. Ladies and gentlemen, Dee Dee Penny. Eric Penny was one of my big brothers. He was handsome, brawny, and a little bit crazy. That's where the surfing came in. Thank you so much for honoring him all these years later and preserving his memory through the East Coast Surfing Hall of Fame induction. It's an incredible honor. As a little kid, Eric had to overcome hearing problems. But like so many of his difficulties, his family was the last to know. He hit it well and used his ability to compensate, a skill he would use many years later while surfing. He became a gymnast, another skill he would later translate onto the surfboard. Surfing was something that he encompassed everything that Eric was. He was fiercely independent. He was a tough guy. He was a rebel. When he was a little kid, he set the woods on fire and they had to call the fire department. In high school, he was industrious. He cut lawns. He had a hot dog stand and made a killing selling it to the summer folks. His reputation as a tough guy <clears throat> turned a little south when he had to go in front of a local judge with our dad for taking a car from the mall for a joyride and getting caught. My oldest brother, Eric, got Eric to grow his hair and started surfing and changing his lifestyle. He bought his first huge 12-foot board in 1968. Wham, he had found his focus. Surfing had become his life. Our family was from Hampton Bays, an ocean resort community on Long Island, a small drinking town with a fishing problem. <laughs> he was the man. He was the envy of all the other guys because he got all the girls. It was hard for me because as his little sister, none of the guys wanted to ask me out. They were afraid of him and his tough persona. It wasn't until years later that I saw the softer side of Eric when I found out from a former surfing fame that Eric had actually pulled him aside and gave him a hug and told him how glad he was that his sister was dating a surfer. We broke up, but my brother and I remain good friends. Eric is a local legend. He is credited with naming one of the local hot surfing spots called Threes, where the ocean and the bay meet at the inlet at Shinnecock. It is still called threes to this day. What really legitimized Eric in the surfing world was his famous cover for Surfing Magazine in 1973 in Pentecostal, Mexico. He also had an equipment contract with Weber Surfboards. He was our local professional surfer, always looking for the perfect wave, much to the annoyance of my dad. Eric had learned his carpentry skills from my father, who was a shop teacher at a local junior high. He would work for my dad during jobs and building houses until he didn't. Dad would look up and Eric would be gone, off looking for some wave he had heard about. El Salvador was the first destination that year and then he stopped in Mexico on the way home and the rest is history. Pentecostal was on the map. 
That trip was also written about in a book called Searching for Captain Zero and talks about his trip there with Bob Rotherham, who still lives in El Salvador to this day. My brother Doug took Eric's daughter Corinne there to visit and see the place where his father had put a mark on the waves. My brother surfed lots of spots on Long Island in the 70s, also met up up and coming surfers of the time. He knew and surfed with Ricky Raz and Mike Oppie Oppenheimer. They surfed all the local spots together from Montauk to Jones Beach. He won the East Coast Championships in 1977 that were held, held in Gilgo Beach, Long Island. And that kind of put his name on comp competitive surfing mat. Eric surfed in Florida when he went to college, briefly, California, and finally the North Shore of Hawaii, where he lived for a few years in the 80s. His pipeline rides were the inspiration for his nickname, Wings of Man, after the low, stretched out, wide arm stance he had on his board. He was an outstanding talent whose life was cut short by cancer. In 1988, Eric found a lump on the side of his neck. A year later, he succumbed to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, leaving behind a wife, a five-year-old daughter, and a family who adored him. Four days before he passed, he was in the water, surfing, doing what he loved. We were all devastated. And here we are 33 years later. How amazing. We want to thank you all for remembering him, for recognizing his contribution to the surfing world, and for adding this honor to his legacy. Eric would be so stoked, and so would my parents. Thank you very much.